Today we're going to service the AC system on this 1997 GMC Safari. We're going to swap out some blower motor components. We're going to replace the vacuum system that controls the AC, including the check valve, vacuum ball, and the necessary hoses. After that, we're going to top off our system with some refrigerant. First of all, here are the AC components on this van. The AC process begins here at the compressor. The fluid flows through this high pressure line into the condenser. From there it comes out through this high pressure line and flows into your evaporator, which is behind this plastic housing. This is your high pressure port and this is where the AC branches off into the rear AC. This line goes into the rear evaporator. Your orifice tube is right here. This high pressure line then comes out and connects into your receiver dryer. This is where your low pressure port is. And from there on it flows back into the compressor. This tank looking thing is just part of the hose. Here's a view from the back of the engine with the doghouse partially off. There you can see the small tank looking thing that's part of the hose. The hose wraps around and comes like this. And this is where it connects with the rear AC. And it goes into the section manifold that connects on top of the compressor, right here. So if your AC is working properly, you should touch the top of this part, the suction manifold. It should be cold. Here we have removed the coolant recovery tank, and we can clearly see the blower motor, relay, and resistor pack. Right next to it to the left is the actual blower motor. And this tube, this high pressure line, your orifice tube is right there. I bought this van six months ago and the AC has never worked. The point of this video is to get the AC going as cold as we can without opening up the AC system. To do that, we follow three main procedures. First, we verify electrical. Second, we verify vacuum. And third, we add the correct amount of refrigerant. So let's get started with the electrical. Under the hood, the van uses one 30 amp fuse and an AC enable relay. In the driver's footwell, it has one 20 amp fuse, fuse number 12. In our situation, fuse number 12 blows every time the AC is turned on. Here's the wiring diagram to see which components are on the grid. The blower motor control unit, in-dash control unit, compressor, and a temperature control unit. We disconnected all four of them, and by process of elimination, after blowing a few fuses, we narrowed it down to the blower motor relay and resistor pack. It has been confirmed that our relay and resistor pack is what's causing fuse number 12 to blow. So we're going to have to swap it out. The blower motor control unit has been changed. It uses two 5.5 millimeter bolts or 732. A swivel ratchet is your best friend here. The control unit feeds the blower motor. So if this circuitry went bad, then it might have messed around with this circuitry too. So I went and changed the blower motor as well. It uses the same millimeter bolts, five of them. And this one has never been serviced, so I had to cut the plastic molding with a knife. The plastic had deteriorated so bad that it crumbled on contact. I'm not even gonna put the case back on there.
This fixed our electrical issue. No more fuses blown. But now, our fan only blows through the defrost vents. Now we move on to the vacuum portion of the diagnostics. On this van, restoring the vacuum system is super easy and super cheap. We're not even gonna mess with the existing hoses. We're just gonna put everything brand new for less than $30. At the heart of the vacuum system is this check valve. You should not be able to blow air to the black connection. Now the black connection, the hose connects to the engine manifold. Yeah, that connection right there. Typically, this is what your hose looks like. A lot of people don't like using this type of hose, the OEM, because it's brittle plastic. The opposite connection goes to the firewall. The firewall has three connections you can hook up to. You want the top left. The bottom piece goes to the vacuum tank, the vacuum canister, or in this case, the vacuum ball. You connect it to this piece, and this is a vent hole. To access the vacuum ball, some people take out the passenger wheel, but we're not even gonna mess with that. We're just gonna cram this guy under the coolant recovery tank. It's not gonna hurt anything. To replace these two hoses, just go to your local auto parts store and pick up some vacuum tubing, 532 by six feet. And this connection takes about one foot, bottom one about three feet. This is more than enough. After replacing the vacuum system, the vents blow. Every setting works as intended. Now we move on to the last procedure. That's reading the manifold gauge and adding refrigerant. To make things simple, I will have the refrigerant professionally evacuated and checked for leaks. Now let's hook up a manifold gauge. Beforehand, I evacuated the system and ran a vacuum. Venting the air into the atmosphere is highly illegal. The shops in my area do it for about 40 to 80 dollars. This van calls for two pounds of refrigerant, three pounds if it has rear AC. We have rear AC, so I'll be adding three pounds. That's 48 ounces. That's four of these bottles. No need to weigh. This is our reading after two bottles. Once you turn on the van, max AC, high fan, you'll get the real reading. And also I'm adding the refrigerant while the van is running. So far, it's around 75 degrees cooling. Ambient temperature, about 95. Did you see that? Now let's have the third bottle. And here we are after our third bottle. Ambient temperature is 100 degrees. So according to this chart, we should expect 50 to 55 on the low side and 315 to 325 on the high side. Now this is when the vehicle is off. We're gonna take those readings with the vehicle on, AC max, fan high. Now one thing about the cans is it's very, very easy to puncture and destroy the tip of the cans as shown here. I punched it too hard, punctured it too hard and it no longer works. So that's money well spent right there. Anyways, let's turn on this van. This is after the third bottle. The gauges look near accurate after the third bottle, but just to be safe, we're gonna add that fourth bottle to make it 48 ounces. Here we are after the final bottle. Ambient temperature is 110. That's right, 110. 
we should get 50 to 55 on the low side and 340 to 345 on the high side. We are getting around 68 low and 300 high with 110 ambient temperature. I will clean the condenser. Basically, I'll spray water into it and remove all the bugs. And I'll take a final reading tomorrow morning. Next day, ambient temperature is around 90 degrees, humidity at 40. Our low pressure is around 32, high pressure around 120. The air blowing inside the cabin is coming out at 59F, not that 45 that we wanted, but I'm guessing the evaporator is dirty. And there's no way for me to clean that unless I swap it out. But I will do that in the future. I will swap out the evaporator along with the receiver dryer, orifice tube, and condenser. That should get us to the desired 45 degrees. For less than $200, we got the AC running, and this should get us through the summer. I hope you guys learned something. Have a good day.